yes, we're seeing a bit of money coming in, a bit of money going out, but most of our clients are very much sitting on the sidelines, uh, waiting to see how things pan out, as, as indeed are we all. Uh, we're waiting to see what the uh, longer term effects are. And I think it's sinking in to most people that the recovery is going to be uh, a, a relatively slow one. So it's not going to be a V-shaped uh, a, a recovery uh, as and when we come out. Uh, and here in Singapore, as you know, we've got another uh, four weeks of lockdown um, and uh, we're getting steady results from companies out and comments from companies on the effect on their trade trading. And most companies are, uh, are fairly badly affected. Uh, there are very few that are escaping the effects of uh, what we're seeing. Uh, so it's not an easy time. It's just assessing. And I can understand why people are, are reluctant to do much. Yes. And many companies already in this earnings season huge are scrapping their guidance because it's so difficult to predict what's in store. You mentioned what's happening in Singapore, and I have to wonder if others are looking on to what's happening here, worried that as economies come back online elsewhere in the U.S. as well, that there's a risk of a second wave. And how does this impact you when you look at the investment portfolio? I mean, are you worried about this? Do you think markets have accurately priced in these risks? Oh, it, I... I don't think markets have accurately priced in uh, the risks. I'm, I'm not sure markets ever quite accurately price in risks. Uh, and, and markets tend to swing from uh, being very risk averse and thinking the end of the world is nigh uh, to being wildly optimistic. And we're at a stage uh, now where I think uh, markets have obviously recovered substantially from the lows. And then I suspect it will just gently seep in or, or maybe not so gently seep in uh, that the economic consequences are, are actually huge of what's going on.